All right, good morning, everybody. This is Josh at the Bean Life Science Museum here again today with another collections tour. Today, I am in the herbarium or the plant collection. So, first, let's talk a little bit about plants just in general. So, there are somewhere around 400,000 400, described species of plants. There are a lot of plants. Most of those plants are angiosperms or flowering plants. So plants, first of all, are split up into several groups. And we have vascular plants and non-vascular plants. Non-vascular plants are plants that do not have vascular tissue, so they don't have xylem or phloem. Think of vascular tissue like, like veins. So plants like trees have xylem and phloem that help take water up from the roots to other parts of the plant and that also help take nutrients that are formed in leaves and things to other parts of the plant. Um, non-vascular plants do not have those systems. Therefore, non-vascular plants tend to be kind of short. They're not, they usually don't grow very tall. Um, and those are things like mosses and algae. So mosses and algae are examples of non-vascular plants. And with vascular plants, so vascular plants Again, being plants that have vascular tissue or xylem and phloem. Uh, vascular plants are split up further as well. We have the largest groups are gymnosperms. So think of like conifers or like pine trees um, are gymnosperms and angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. So the vast majority of plants on our planet are angiosperms or flowering plants. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, how we collect and store our plant specimens. Um, and But before we do that I want to talk a little bit about why plants are important. So plants are what we would call autotrophs, meaning that they create their own food. They feed themselves. They create food within themselves that they use to survive. Um, typically, they're doing that through photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process through which plants take energy from the sun, water, um, and carbon dioxide, and form sugars. So that's photosynthesis. That is a really important process. And, and that's how plants feed themselves. And because plants feed themselves, they get the energy from the sun and they create those sugars, all of their life, all animal life on Earth, depends on those plants. Right? Whether directly or indirectly, some animals will eat the plants to gain their energy, and some animals will eat other animals who eat the plants. So all of that energy that we use as humans and all that energy that animals use to grow and survive comes from those plants. So plants are extremely important. Now, um, we have here at the Bean Life Science Museum, we have the largest herbarium, or the largest plant collection in Utah. We also have one of the largest plant collections in the Intermountain West, and one of the largest even in the country. Here at the Bean Life Science Museum, we house somewhere around 650,000 plant specimens. Um, it is our second largest collection in terms of the number of specimens. Uh, but it is the largest collection in terms of physical space that it occupies. So again, we have somewhere around 650,000 plant specimens and growing. We have um, lots of 
people working in our, in our herbarium. We have um, several professors who are constantly collecting and adding things to our herbarium, and we always have lots of students here working uh, to help mount our plants and add them to our collection, as well as to database them. Now, plant collecting is a really cool activity and one that anybody can start getting into. Chances are you'll have most everything you need to start collecting plants already at home. So, let me talk a little bit about that process. First, what, what we do when we collect or how we collect things that we're looking for when we collect specimens, and then how we mount them and prepare them to be stored in our collection. So, like I mentioned earlier, there are somewhere around 400,000 species of plants. That's a lot of plants. And they're usually a lot really close by to where you live. And the identification, plant identification can be somewhat difficult. There are a few things that can help you to identify plants. One, here is a key. So usually when scientists are trying to identify species, not just plants, but insects or anything else, we like to use a key. This one in particular is called a Utah flora. So this is a key for all of the plant species that can be found in Utah. And you can see it's a pretty big book. And on the surface, it looks pretty boring because all the pages look something like this. Now, a key is really important and does a couple of things. So when you first look at a key, whether it's for plants or insects or whatever else, it takes you through steps. So likely, It'll ask you one question about the plant, say something about the leaf shape. And then when you and then it'll give you a couple of choices as an answer. When you choose the answer, it directs you to another question. And through a series of questions and and the answers to those questions, you will eventually get to a single species. Now these these keys can be sometimes intimidating, first because of how big they are, as well as how detailed they are. Um, they require a knowledge of plant anatomy, right? So there are, a lot of, there are a lot of words in here that may sound, or that may be unfamiliar to you. Um, this is a really great tool, but it's not a great tool for the beginner. Uh, there are, there are certain apps or there are other books um, or smaller guides to help you um, identify plants that are in your area. Usually they are regional. Um, so those are something you can look up. Um, a really cool app that you could download to help you identify plants is called Seek, S-E-E-K. Um, it is developed by iNaturalist, the same people that make iNaturalist. Um, so that one, you can take a picture of a plant or you use your camera and kind of hover it over a plant and it can help sometimes even identify the species. If not to species, it'll get you pretty close. So when scientists are collecting plants and scientists who study plants are called botanists. Uh, when a botanist is looking for plants to collect, they want to collect a whole plant. So when they're collecting, they're trying to collect every part of a plant. So the roots, stems, leaves, and flowers. So right now is a really great time to start collecting plants because a lot of plants are starting to flower. So this is the perfect time to do plant collecting. And a lot of botanists will do a lot of collecting in the springtime and early summer. Um, and collect everything they can and then spend the rest of the year um, identifying, mounting, and putting those plants into the, the collection. So let me show you a couple uh, of tools that, you could, that we use here to mount our plants. First, let me show you an example of a plant 
mount. I'm gonna come down here to show you the table. So this is a large envelope that has a lot of plant specimens in it. So you can see this is a herbarium specimen. I want you to notice, notice a couple of things about this plant. First, the plant is flattened. It's been pressed and it's been dried. And then it's been glued here onto this acid-free paper. Um, sometimes there will be small things um, that can't very well be glued onto the paper but that are important for identifying so some of these will have some a little envelope um, attached as well to help hold um, part of the specimen. We also have labels, just like in all of our other collections with our specimens. Everything has a label that tells us the name of the plant, at least the, species, the, the scientific name, sometimes the common name. It tells you where it was collected and when it was collected and usually will also tell you who collected it. So we can see that this particular plant, <clears throat> I'll bring it a little closer so you can see that label. This particular plant was collected in 1947. So that's pretty old. <clears throat> and this was collected in Juab County, Utah. <clears throat> so, that is what one of our mounted specimens looks like. And we will often store them, store multiple together here in a single envelope. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'll go show you guys some of the collection. Now, um, we use a few things when we're first collecting bring this back up. When we collect a specimen out in the wild, uh, we will try to collect the whole specimen like I mentioned earlier. So often botanists will, be t will take um, hand trowels, just like you might use in a garden, to help dig up the roots of the specimen so they can have the whole thing there. Um, sometimes um, we will also use shears, right? Garden shears. Um, because some things, like a tree, for example, is a little bit too big to fit on that single sheet of paper. Um, and so we will, ha we will have to cut off just parts of it um, that we want to mount and keep for our collection. Um, those are really important. And then we put them into a plant press. Uh, and unfortunately, I think all of the plant presses here are being used, so I don't have one to show you. Um, but a plant press typically consists of two sheets of wood, two pieces of wood that are really that are really stiff. And then in between, we'll put layers of cardboard and newspaper. And we'll put the plants in between the cardboard and the newspaper. And then we'll wrap the whole thing with, um, with rope or with some kind of fastener to help keep it really tight together and we can stack a lot of plants in a single plant press so botanists when they're going collecting will have multiple plant presses with them so they can they can collect lots of specimens all at once and bring them back so the plant press keeps them nice and squished down together and then we will either leave them in the plant press for a little while to dry or to help speed up the drying process we will also use a drying oven We'll put, we'll put the whole plant press into the drying oven to dry it out really quickly. Usually, for most plants, it takes a, a day of being in the oven to be completely dried. Um, sometimes longer if it's a really particularly wet or thick plant. So, we use those plant presses to get them pressed down and flattened, and then we will We'll bring them here into this room and we'll put them onto the paper, arrange them the way we want. Um, here's another example. 
of a mounted specimen. So we will press it onto the paper and then we'll do, we'll secure it to the paper in a, a couple of different ways. So usually we will just, we'll use Elmer's glue to just glue it. So we'll glue it in a few places to, to keep it onto the paper or sometimes we'll also um, use thread and kind of sew it onto the paper. This one, use thread. May be really difficult to see, but there are these little dark green pieces of thread that you can see they've gone across to help hold it on, and on the back they've covered that thread to help keep it really secure. So some use we'll use a thread to tie it onto the paper, and then some for most of them we just use Elmer's glue. And when we use the glue, we will We'll glue it on and it'll be nice and flat, but then we will also use, so we've got some layers of cardboard and styrofoam that we'll put on top of it and then these really heavy weights. So we can put this thing on top and keep it on top to help keep it flat and pressed against the paper um, so that it stays there really well. This, not just wood, but they put cement in here so this is pretty heavy or we also have smaller lead weights that we'll put on top of the plant to help keep it flat against the paper <coughs> while that excuse me <coughs> while the glue is dry now <coughs> i think that is all i wanted to show you guys here in our mounting room so let me take you now out <clears throat> to our collection and show you guys where we're actually storing these plants and how they're organized and, and cataloged. Um, so give me one second. Take this off of the pad. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to walk out here. And to give you an idea of how big this collection is, let me show you. I'm gonna turn the camera around. So we have this room here. You see these filing cabinets all down here that are full of plants. So we have this room and you can see several workstations throughout. We also have microscopes, which can be really important for helping to identify plants. Some of the key features on plants can be really small. Uh, so we need a microscope to help us determine the species. In the field, you can use a small, mic uh, a, a small magnifying glass to help you see some of the smaller details. Let me walk you through this workstation here. And you can see we have even more cabinets full of plants. So on these cabinets, you can see each row of cabinets is labeled with the family and the genus and species. And then each cabinet in that row, again, is, is labeled in the same way. So family, genus, species, and then also location. So now let's open up one of these cabinets so you can see what it looks like. Here you can see we've got a couple of labels of other universities. One of the great things about the herbarium is that we'll collect multiple specimens of the same species from the same place and we'll often trade those specimens with other herbariums across the country and across the world. Uh, so we'll constantly be adding to our collection of we'll add specimens that we get from other herbariums. A lot of universities will have their own herbarium 
and we're trading them. So we'll get, we'll give them some of our specimens and they'll send us some of theirs. So really cool. But you could see we've got these folders like we saw earlier that are full of those specimens. So let's take a look at a different cabinet. To help us save space, we've got these, these cool filing cabinets that are on rollers. So I can spin this wheel and that moves those cabinets down the line. That helps us save a lot of space so we can fit a lot more cabinets in a smaller area. Looks like, let's see, we recently, since we remodeled the museum um, a few years ago, we really expanded this collection. And so we've got a lot of cabinets that are empty and ready for specimens. And because we're storing them so flat, we can fit a lot of specimens. So even with having, here we go, here's one that's really full. So even though we have 650,000 specimens, we still have a lot of empty cabinet space for more. So our collection can grow even more, even bigger than it is now. So let's take a look here. So we've got, let me pull out this. So you can see this folder is labeled with the scientific name. So everything that is in this folder is all the same species. And we have over on this side, we have a location. So all of these are, so everything in this folder is this one species and from this location. So this, this folder contains specimens from the United States. Some of them, however, get more specific. So this one, so you can see again, we have the species name here. And then this one's from Nevada. So rather than the last one we saw was just the United States. So it probably has specimens from multiple states. This one has specimens all from Nevada. And we have some that get really specific to county even, or to a single city. So just as a reference, I wanna be really careful. I just, I, uh, I'm trying to hold the iPad as well as show this to you, so I don't want to want to be really careful as I when I pull something out that I don't want to drop it. Let me open this up so you guys can see it. So here we have one of our specimens, again with its important label. And then we have a lot of students working to database all of our specimens. And so we add these barcodes up at the top so we can scan them and see information about them on the computer. It's really handy. And you can see, let me show you up here, just you can see some plants are really big and thick and if you think of something like a cactus or a sunflower right something that has a really large large flower or a really large stem we can only flatten them so much so you see a couple of things in there that are pretty big all right I think that is all I wanted to show you guys today. Feel free to comment with questions that you guys might have. Um, I will, just like with our other videos, we'll be checking on them periodically to help answer your questions. Um, and if you have any, if you have any questions about plants in general, if you have questions about how to collect, how to identify, anything like that, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you, help at least point you in the right direction. Uh, and then maybe once we're back open again after, after 
all this stuff kind of settles down. Um, if you'd like, or you can maybe even set up a time for you to come into the museum um, and show you a little bit about what we do or help teach you how, how we do things here. So anyway, have a great day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next week.